February 1st, 1933, 5.30 p.m. There's a message going out in the airwaves today. A young student chaplain at the Technical College in Charlottenburg is airing out a message for the young generation. This message is a message of warning. Warning of a coming danger whose name would live in infamy forever. But this message would be cut short before the warning began. The young chaplain giving the message was none other than Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And the message was a warning of the recently elected Fuhrer Adolf Hitler. This is the In History Show on the Semper Reformanda podcast. I'm your host, Cody Bachelkamp. This rise of Adolf Hitler is a fascinating and terrifying look into church history because much of Hitler's support came from many within the institutions of the church, Catholic and Protestant. But while there were a, a great number of supporters there, there was also the up-and-coming generation that had been wooed as well. It was the influence upon this next generation that Bonhoeffer was concerned about. Bonhoeffer was a young pastor and theologian, but not one of blind faith. He was an intellectual from a family of intellectuals. The Bonhoeffer family was so instructed in the ways of careful thought and reasoning that it was common for the children not to ask questions. That was until they had shown they had attempted to work through the question themselves to find an answer. So sometimes, to some, there is a such thing as a dumb question. At least to the Bonhoeffers, it was one you did not attempt to understand yourself before asking. It was this intellectual drive laying upon the foundation of Bonhoeffer's faith that looked at the situation of the current times and saw danger. Bonhoeffer didn't need to ask the question to find that out. He had already worked that out himself. So, the young Bonhoeffer took to the radio to issue a warning to those who would put blind trust in this newly elected Fuhrer Adolf Hitler just one day ago. The issue, however, came as Bonhoeffer was speaking. As he was approaching the crux of his argument and warning, the broadcast would be shut off. Then, as today, however, the guarantor of justice, sense, and success is the Fuhrer. The image of the leader, as it arose in the youth movement, has undergone considerable transformation in the recent past, but it has ultimately become the only common denominator for youth in all their desires, the symbol of the younger generation. The political, ideological, and religious ideas of the younger generation are symbolized in the image of the Fuhrer, and its transformation mirrors their emotional and political history. Where does this particular fire, this brilliance, and this pathos contained in the concept of the leader, as used by the youth of today, come from? Those in their 40s can assure us that in their youth, such talk of a leader was completely unknown. Does the call for a leader arise from knowledge that the power of things over people has become so great and so destructive and so chaotic that only a great figure would be able to restore order and unity? Or does talk always necessarily turn to a leader when 
given the awareness of the political necessity of surrendering the ideal of the individual and the engagement of human beings as a mass, as collective, everything one was forced to surrender is transferred onto the ideal of the leader and is rediscovered in him, magnified immeasurably? What other explanation is there for the peculiar tension between a cult of personality and collectivism? Or is the call for a leader a logical reflection of both our current political situation as well as of a certain youthful way of looking at life in general? That is, is it historically and psychologically necessary? And if this is the case, what are the limits? To what extent is leading and being led healthy and genuine? And when does it become pathological and excessive? Only those who give careful consideration to these questions can understand something of the nature of the ideology of the Fuhrer and something of the behavior of the younger generation. As today, youth leaders, almost everything depends on having a good sense of direction, going beyond the vague and fantastic in order to have a clear vision. The health and rectitude of young people at risk. To this extent, the ideal and illusion are close neighbors. To those who are exp- This episode of the Semper Reformanda podcast was written and produced by me. Special thanks to Josh Caval for the music. Thanks. We'll see you next time.